PJSC Yakovlev is once again re-evaluating the future of Russia's regional aviation, this time with a distinct emphasis on scope. The company confirmed that it is exploring the development of a stretched variant of the Superjet family, intended to accommodate 120 to 130 passengers as part of a potential next-generation initiative referred to as SJ Next. Although still in the conceptual phase, the idea indicates a major strategic shift, a departure from the conventional 100-seat regional aircraft market toward a segment that is progressively commanding a dominant role in global fleet planning. The announcement was made by Alexander Dolotovsky, Deputy Managing Director of PJSC Yakovlev and Director of the company's Regional Aircraft Division. According to him, current market dynamics plainly demonstrate that the over 100-seat segment constitutes the most promising growth sector for short- and medium-haul aviation. Crucially, Yakovlev believes that the industrial infrastructure established through the import-substituted SJ-100 program offers a viable foundation for such an expansion. Why is this not just a simple fuselage stretch? This initiative conveys deeper economic, aerodynamic, and structural principles and revives design concepts that Russian aircraft engineers have been examining for more than a decade. How did the Superjet evolve into the SJ-100 platform? The original Sukhoi Superjet 100 was developed in the early 2000s as Russia's re-entry into the international civil aviation industry. It was a technologically ambitious project, but relied significantly on foreign suppliers, especially for engines, avionics, and systems integration. Although the aircraft entered service and achieved moderate international adoption, its operational history exposed weaknesses in maintenance logistics and supply chain resilience. What changed after 2022? These vulnerabilities became far more evident when sanctions effectively severed access to Western components. The response was the SJ-100, a substantially redesigned, domestically substituted variant of the Superjet. The aircraft replaces foreign systems with Russian-made equivalents and is powered by the PD-8 engine, marking an important step toward technological autonomy. How far has the SJ-100 progressed? Certification testing is currently underway. In December, one test aircraft climbed to an altitude of 12,276 meters, confirming stable high-altitude performance. Yakovlev states that 41 Russian companies now participate in the program, highlighting the breadth of industrial collaboration supporting the platform. Why does this rebuilt ecosystem matter? Because it enables the concept of a larger superjet variant today in a way that was not feasible in the past. Engines, avionics, structures, and manufacturing capacity are now aligned under domestic control. Why are 120 to 130 seats so important today? Dolotovsky explains that global aviation is moving away from small regional jets toward larger, more efficient aircraft capable of serving both regional routes and thinner trunk routes. Airlines increasingly favor aircraft with lower cost per seat, greater flexibility, and stronger economics across varying load factors. What aircraft dominate this segment globally? The market is led by models such as the Airbus A220-300 and the Embraer E195-E2. These aircraft blur the line between regional jets and narrow-body airliners, offering airlines flexible route optimization tools. Why does this matter specifically for Russia? Russian carriers have limited access to this class of aircraft. A domestically produced 120 to 130 seat jet would bridge the gap between the SJ-100 and larger aircraft like the MC-21. It would allow airlines to increase capacity without changing operational categories, crew structures, or airport requirements. Has Yakovlev explored this idea before? Yes. Dolotovsky emphasized that stretched superjet concepts date back to the Sukhoi civil aircraft era. What were SSJ-130, SSJ Next Generation, SSJ-SV? 
These programs studied how to expand the superjet beyond 100 seats while preserving economic competitiveness. Among them, SSJSV was the most technically ambitious. How was SSJSV supposed to work? The concept aimed to carry 120 to 130 passengers without changing the engine, retaining the SAM-146 power plant. Performance losses from added weight were offset by a redesigned wing with greater surface area and optimized geometry. This allowed acceptable takeoff and landing performance at regional airports while maintaining a range of roughly 3,500 kilometers. Why was the engineering logic sound? A longer wingspan and higher aspect ratio improved lift efficiency, compensating for reduced thrust-to-weight ratio. At the same time, the stretched fuselage improved payload economics without proportionally increasing structural penalties. Why were these ideas never built? Market conditions, organizational restructuring, and later geopolitical disruptions halted progress. However, Dolotovsky notes that today's SJ Next concept is not a reinvention, but a continuation of this pause design lineage. Why can larger aircraft be more efficient? Small aircraft face physical limits that do not scale downward. Structural thickness must account for bird strikes, ice, debris, and erosion, regardless of aircraft size, creating fixed weight penalties. How do human factors affect efficiency? Cockpits, doors, galleys, and emergency exits are governed by human dimensions and safety regulations. In smaller aircraft, these elements occupy a larger proportion of fuselage volume and mass, reducing efficiency. What happens as aircraft get larger? These fixed components represent a smaller percentage of total structure. This improves the empty weight to payload ratio and directly enhances operating economics. How does aerodynamics improve with scale? Increasing aircraft length reduces the relative contribution of friction drag. Larger aircraft generate more lift relative to drag, improving aerodynamic efficiency. What does this mean for fuel consumption? A larger superjet may burn more fuel overall, but less fuel per passenger than the SJ-100. Airlines prioritize fuel burn per seat, not absolute fuel consumption. Why is wing redesign central to SJ Next? The stretched variant would depend on a larger, more aerodynamically efficient wing. This enables climb performance, cruise efficiency, and runway compatibility without requiring a new engine class. How long would development take? If formally launched, Dolotovsky estimates five to six years, assuming stable funding and no major disruptions. Production could run alongside the SJ-100 using the same facilities and much of the same supply chain. Why does this matter strategically? A family-based approach lowers capital costs, improves economies of scale, and allows airlines to move between variants without retraining crews or restructuring maintenance. What is this signal for Russia's aviation future? Yakovlev is planning not just for recovery, but for the next 20 to 30 years. A 130-seat superjet would represent a mature, forward-looking regional aviation strategy grounded in physics, market reality, and accumulated engineering expertise. Will SJ Next happen? That depends on investment, certification progress, and airline demand. But by revisiting and consolidating SSJ-130, SSJ Next Generation, and SSJ-SV concepts, Yakovlev signals that long-held theories may finally become operational reality. If you liked the video, please subscribe, share, and like. Also, please take the memberships to encourage us.